Good morning. Welcome. Uh, those of you that are in Asia, uh, it's great that you could uh, join me this this evening for you. And for those of you that are on the West Coast, if you're up this early, uh, fantastic. Uh, you can start the class in a seated position. I'm up a little bit higher, which is really beneficial for someone that is tighter through the hips. Um, legs don't have to be incredibly tight in. It could actually be further apart. Um, when you're up higher, it's actually more progressive in side bending, and that's something that we're, we're, we will be doing. So when you're sitting, just kind of see how the weight sits. So if I'm, again, sitting back and I'm kind of in a posterior tilt, well, I'm going to try to move forward. And you might not be all the way forward the whole time, but, um, and then there's, there's people that sway, you know, if, if, if you're a person that has more weight in your feet and your ribs are coming forward, um, you want to be more in the middle. And if, if you are sitting higher, um, you can be a little bit unstable. So I say this all the time. It's it, maybe it's better for you to just sit upright and you like in any class that I teach, um, you do what you can take stuff out that doesn't work. Um, you could be in any position. Uh, think of quality over quantity and, and uh, we'll keep building on your practice, uh, whatever level you're at. So I'm gonna be moving my body. So again, I'm, 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 I'm raised up, so it's a little bit harder, harder to touch the floor. So just move your ribs laterally and just try to, try to not use your hands as much. So think that the hands are more um, just in terms of balance, especially again, if you're sitting on a higher surface. And, and those of you that had, you know, if you're up on a, you had some chairs or some furniture to hold on to, also very good too. And just kind of see how the, the spine is moving. So you may actually move better to one direction than the other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back into the middle and I'm gonna circle around in a circular motion. So getting my ribs to move around. You could include your head. Um, I'm not just so that I can uh, speak more clearly to you, but you could be moving your head and then just come back into the middle and circle around the opposite direction. And with this, what you can see is, is how strong is the abdomen and, and, and mobilizing the upper body and the spine. So it may not move that well, but you know, that's a big reason why we're doing it. So just come back in the middle and uh, what you're going to do is again, keep balancing out the weight in the hips. Think that you're touching the walls beside you, the ceiling above you, what's behind you and, you know, continue to ground down so that you can find more space above you. So recross the legs and, and again, push through the outsides of the feet, get nice and tall, nice and upright, and then just, Look over your right shoulder, look over your left, look over your right. Maybe you want to hold right longer than I am. You could certainly do that. Now look to the right and look up to the ceiling and then look down to the floor on the left side. Then look up to the ceiling, move your eyes, which will eventually move the head better, back up like a rainbow, you're following a rainbow, and then back up over to the right, and then back over to the left, and then just bring it back to center. Just let the head drop down and, and drop the shoulders, then look forward, look up, right? And, and you know, trying to get more of the front of your body to lift up is key. Right, and then bring the head back to center. Now I'm gonna take the left hand to the left and reach the right hand to the right. And you know, I could be letting the head go, I could drop it down, I don't have to pick it up. Um, I could take my right hand behind my head, I can lift through the chin, I can through the, lift through the chest. Arm could be you know, more of like a side angle type of position. So there's all these great, many, many different things we could use to help you in finding the, the best. Um, type of technique. So take three deep breaths, breathe in, breathe out. And again, if, if, if you don't necessarily have a lot of awareness, explore less range of motion, because it actually might be better. 
aesthetically going further, you know, looks better, but it may not be the best practice. And then take the right arm out to the right and you can bring yourself back up. You can recross the legs. Um, you can take the right hand to the right side. You can reach the left hand to the left. And, and I'm, I'm just, you know, very early for me or not very early, but it's early. So your body's a little bit probably more stiff, but it's, it's also really more sensitive. So it's really good to practice when you're not incredibly hot and warm because it gives you a false sense of really how, how you should be practicing. So it's, it's, not, it's not bad to feel discomfort, you know, because it's giving you a better sense of practice better. And then you can take the left hand behind the head, you can lift the chin, you can lift the chest, you know, there's many, many different layers. So when you might be able to see I'm bending my elbow more and then that adds more for me, more into my hip. But, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe it's better to be up high. Maybe that's where you really need to leverage the pose. And then you can take the left arm up to the left and then bring yourself back up. So you could, you know, keep just this practice could be really a lot for someone and this is something that I use personally. So I'm going to come off the blocks and then when I come off the blocks, I'm going to sit um, in a seated position, but I'm going to, I'm going to take the legs just a little bit wider than my shoulders. And I'm going to take my knees to the right side and maybe not all the way down. I'm going to take them up to the left. I'm pushing through my hands. I'm gri gripping the floor, knuckles. You know, I'm, I'm never just bringing the weight into my hands or my feet. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm using them as they're connected to the floor. And then bring yourself back up to the left. And see which, it, which uh, hip is moving better today. Or it's really your femur. Your, it's not so much your hip. It's just the rotation of the thigh bone. So you could have your hands down. Um, it's going to be more of a motion because it's morning. So I'm going to come, I have this block to really help me extend and then I'm going to come up and then I'm going to come down. I'm not really thinking so much about deep range. It's more again, like strengthening and manipulating the tissues. Cause you know, I'm, I'm, I say this often when I'm teaching, I'm not really so concerned with just the end range of motion, you know, unless I'm, Someone's taking a photograph of me or something like that. And you can move forward. You can bring yourself up. You know, so I'm, when I'm forward and down, I'm actually trying to lift my right leg into my chest, into my abdomen. And then bring yourself back up. Take the knees up. Take the knees to the left. Um, this upright position is deceptively very good for the back hip. Um, sometimes people need support in the back knee. So you can come forward and you can bring yourself up, um, you know, and j just be sensitive to, to maybe one side just isn't as, it's just not as forgiving. And, and, and that's why I wouldn't go further. Not that you can't explore further range, right? That's really what we're doing as we're practicing. So bring yourself up, bring yourself forward. And again, the same thing, I'm trying to lift my leg into my chest. I'm trying to bring it up more. And then I'm going to bring myself up. And then last time, I'm going to come forward. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my leg into my chest. I'm not just trying to get down. And then I'm trying to keep my back straight. That's why I like this block. Then bring yourself back up and take the knees back up. Um, bring the feet together like a Baddha Konasana position and use your hands and push your knees apart. Now, if you were sitting on something higher, this is really kind of the same effect. But when my hips aren't touching the floor, I'm getting traction through my spine. And it's, it's a little bit, right? It's not, it's not huge, but it's, it's nice. And it should also help with um, providing more space uh, into the pelvis. And then you can bring the hips down. We're going to come to an all four position. So come onto your hands and your knees. So once you come onto your hands and your knees, just, um, just explore the space. Take the hands to the left. Take the hands to the right. 
right? Take the hands to the left, and you might be like, oh, I really need to be on this one side. Spend more time on that. Take the hands to the right, bring them back to the left, and then back to center. Now, grip the floor, press through the hands, and round through the shoulders, really round through the shoulders, then let the chest drop down through the arms, round through the shoulders, round through the back, then let the chest drop down, press through the hands, round through the back, and then come back to center. Now again, you could just stay on your hands, just keep moving and being in all fours. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this block behind the heel of my hand, and the closer my knees are to my hands, the easier it is to lift the heels of the hands off the floor. So you, you want to be able to lift straight up and down. And it's, it's really tough on the hands, right? It takes a lot of strength to do this well. And there's really no fixed number when I do them. I'll do like anywhere from 10 to 50. Um, and, and the further I go away with my knees, the more difficult it is. So if you want to make it more difficult, you could do these in a plank eventually. Um, that takes typically anyone, even if you have a lot of good strength, takes uh, a while, six months, most likely like a year. And then come back into the middle, and then when you come back into the middle, um, just have the hands underneath the shoulders, push through the hands, round through the shoulders, and lift up into a plank if you can. So grip the floor, knuckles, hollow out through the belly, you know, round through the chest, and right? just kind of play around with the weight. And then you can go up into a down dog, and you can pedal the legs out, right? You can move the heels. And you could, of course, always come down into these positions. Um, like if I was working with you personally, I would, I, I, I always move people into seated positions and then I can adjust them, right? I'm gonna take the hands back towards the feet and walking back and that's really no different than walking on your hands. I'm going to walk forward again. So the hands are just underneath the shoulders. And this is just really good in transferring the weight because a lot of times people, they just depend on, the, on one arm more than the other. And then it, that becomes, um, it can be problematic. So walk the hands back towards the feet. Right, hang in a, hang, a rag doll. You could certainly be up higher. You don't have to be so low. Take the hands forward one more time, right? And then slowly lower yourself down, all the way down. And then take the arms into a W position, a 90 degree angle, have the head down, take the arms up, and then holding. Make the hands into fist if that helps you more. And then as you're lifting the arms, you know, you're, you're really working through, um, not having the shoulders round forward in something like this. So very good for the shoulders. Bring the arms down and then take them up again. So squeeze the shoulder blades together and think that you're pulling the hands to the elbows so the shoulders are pulling down too. So a little bit of a retraction and then bring the arms down. Have the hands just underneath the shoulders. Um, Round, hollow through the belly, come up to plank if you can, and then go back up into a down dog. So go back up into a down dog. You can pedal the legs out. We're gonna walk your feet forward to the middle of your mat and walk your hands back toward your feet. So um, just because I do have a weight here, so if you had something heavy and you do wanna learn how to squat, you could hold this weight or hold a piece of furniture or a bar and that really helps but if you had a torn meniscus or something going on with your you know you don't have an ACL um, it can be irritating the knee to squat but um, when I'm holding something I can really manipulate things a little bit more so I'm moving the weight around to manipulate my ankle to manipulate my hip um, I'm trying to move the tailbone down because I'm, I'm a posterior, I'm an anterior uh, pelvis. Um, and if you're a posterior, you know, you, you, could, you could work on an anterior tilt of the pelvis just a bit, right? So I'm gonna come forward into a forward fold. And then as you come forward into a forward fold, you could roll yourself up into a standing position. So roll yourself back up. And then when you come up, 
Just take the arms up overhead, bend the knees a couple inches, stand up through the arms, and then bring yourself back up to standing and you can bring the arms back down. So come to the middle of your mat. I'm just facing you so that you can see me a bit better. So I've, I've done these a little bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm really gripping into the tissues with my fingertips and I'm just bending the knees a little bit. And just see with the range of motion with the knee because the slightest range might start to like grip or kind of grab and it hurts. So you don't have to go beyond that, but eventually you will. You know, it's just, there's, a, there's most likely some scar tissue, some arthritis, you know, anybody has these things um, to some degree. But when you're, when you're gradually bending the knees, it'll get more fluid. And then I'm gonna come back and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle the knees in a circular motion. So this will strengthen the knee. Um, if your knees are really unstable, make the motion obviously really small. And then you can circle around in the opposite direction. So this class is labeled as a higher level, but really the smaller, the more um, intricate things that you can do will lead to more dynamic things. So it's, it's, it's you know, like if, come back in the middle and just, just go to a bent knee position. So if I'm, you know, say someone had shoulder pain and some person, another person wants to stand on their hands, you're really kind of doing the same thing. Um, similar work, you know, obviously the person that has shoulder pain isn't going to be on their hands just yet, but eventually they could. So come back up to standing. When you come up back up to standing, just kind of see how the weight sits in the feet. So move it into the heels and the feet can be apart. They don't have to be together. I just did that for your knees. Just kind of see how you hold the weight. Again, see if you lean. Um, see what you can't see in your space, wherever you're at, and that's what you need to see. So if I'm always looking over here, 10, 20 years later, I'm going to look more like this. Not that that's bad, it's just there's things you can do so that it's not like that, right? So take the feet a little bit wider than, say, the shoulders, take the arms forward, and just bend the knees, come up on the toes, just doing this to warm up your legs. So I can do this with no strength in my legs. And that's what you, that's what you don't want to do. You want to, you want to really stay strong, bring yourself back up, L lower again, find angles that you're weak in, And that's where you want to sit. You know, I could, I could sit and, and you don't have to do this right, but you can sit low. This is actually the easiest position for me because I have the flexibility and I can rest here, right? Bring yourself back up. One more time, we're gonna lower, height of the hips, right? And then bring yourself back up. Take the feet a little wider than the shoulders. Turn the feet out slightly if you need to. Um, take the arms out wide. I'm gonna be in a horse stance. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but push the knees apart. And this is something that you could do throughout the day. Um, a minute, you know, maybe it's just 10 seconds, but you could work up to a minute. Um, before each meal and, and not sitting incredibly low, but as it gets easier, the stance becomes wider and posture becomes more upright, you know, and then, and then you can really get more into like fuller ranges with your splits and then bring yourself back up. When you come back up, we're going to take the legs to a wide position. The legs wide, I'm going to turn the right hand out to the right. And then I'm going to sit down into warrior two. So that was Noah. And, and then you can lift the thighs up and out. And then as you lift the thighs up and out, you're just getting nice and long. And, you know, I, I really do believe in warrior two, but if you're really wanting to work on more range, it becomes more side angle. Um, did some stuff last week as far as a Cossack stretch, but again, maybe you're up. Bring yourself back up, turn the right foot in, turn the left foot out to the left, and then bend the left knee and lift the thighs up and out. So all these positions, you're, you're working on alignment, but eventually you're going beyond alignment. That makes sense. And then when you're lifting up and out, you, you, you want to stay strong. And again, just see what all these ranges provide for you. And maybe you're down, you know, hand on the outside, I mean, again, this is 
this is probably the easiest thing for me to do rather than staying up. Like, so the most basic positions can actually be the best positions. So bring yourself back up, bring your arms down, turn your left foot in and come forward halfway and just hold a halfway position. And then you can have hands on a chair or whatever. You can get the hands down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just move the weight around. So those of you that can't do like a Cossack stretch, I did that last week. I'm going to do a little bit more of that. So I'm, I'm bending the knee, the left knee, and then you could turn the left foot out more, protect the knee. If you could turn out too, I'm going to sit into the right side and then into the left. And then what you can do is take the legs out a little wider if you can, right? Shouldn't have any pain in the knee or the hip, but squeeze the legs in, but then also to practice lifting the thighs up and out. And over time, right, the stance becomes longer or really wider. And so I'm manipulating more of the inner thigh with a wide stance, right? Then bring the feet in a little bit closer. And those of you that can't get lower, you know, stand up, right? But I'm going to turn my left foot out to the left. I'm going to sit down into, you know, in yoga, we call it skandhasana. In martial arts, they call it more of like a Cossack stretch. And then push through the, the left foot, go to the right. So, you know, getting more and uncomfortable is part of it. Should be the knee though, you know. My foot's turned up, it's hamstring. If my foot's turned in, it's adductor. Push through the right foot, transfer the weight into the left. You know, I'm trying to use my legs more, not so much just my flexibility. You can do it without the hands. You know, not that this is better, it's just, and it could be a lightweight, you know, something that you need a lightweight. I just, I've heard uh, stories over the years of what people are using and, um, you, you know, you use a weight that you can't handle, um, most likely you can hurt yourself. So come back um, to the middle, bring the feet in a bit and bring yourself up. And then when you come back up, just in a standing position. So just take the feet back into a, the middle position. Take a couple deep breaths. Again, see how the weight sits. Take one more breath here. And then we'll come down onto your hands and knees. I'm gonna mix in some stuff in terms of being on your hands to strengthen your shoulders, strengthen your hand positions. Um, but let's say you're, you know, there's a day that you just can't do what you did before you can scale it down. So think of it as like a pyramid. So you start with five, the next time you do it, you do four, and then the next time you do it, you do three, and then maybe a week you rest. That's a way that you could do it. Um, but each rep or practice, like the, 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 the it, should, it should all look the same. It should look really clean. Not that we're trying to be perfect, but it shouldn't be, um, shouldn't be distorted. So come back onto your hands and your knees and just lift the knees uh, up off the floor a little bit. So I'm on the tops of the feet. You could be on the toes too. I'm pulling in, I'm rounding through the shoulders and then I'm gonna pull back up into a down dog. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some pipe push-ups, which, you know, people do down dog for years and it, it, it's good, right? But it doesn't really get stronger and this is where, where I like this. So when you're pushing through the hands, you're rotating the shoulders out. So it's a lot of shoulder work and that's eventually leading to like, again, handstands and like wheel. So grip the floor, rotate the shoulders out, make the stance a little bit shorter. And then the first one I'm gonna adapt it for you. So come forward and then come down with the knees and say that was like, whoa, it was a lot. But you got something going on in your shoulder, right? I wouldn't stick with planks, side planks, stuff like that. But go back up into a down dog and I'm, I'm gonna do uh, a few more, maybe five, right? I'm gonna come forward, I'm gonna come down. I'll press, I'm gonna come forward, elbows in, press back up. I'm gonna come forward, press back up. One more time. 
press back up. You know, when you're doing something really physical, really hard, you might be not be breathing through your nose. You might be breathing through your mouth. Perfectly fine, right? So um, bend the knees. You can walk forward or jump forward to the top of the mat. Come all the way forward. Come into a forward fold. So hang forward into a forward fold. And then step the left foot back into a lunge. And with the left foot back, you can move the weight around. I'm gonna come up into a high lunge. So come up with the arms, the upper body. And then when you come up into a high lunge, like I said, if you're not in alignment, it, it, it's really okay. You know, it's just, you wanna be really strong and you wanna be uh, stable. So you can push through the feet. You can look up towards the hands, the fingers. And then bring the hands down, and with the hands down, just come down with the left knee, and then just kind of move the weight around. Move into the left hip, move into the right. Make it nice and long if you can. Take the hands over to the left side, look high over the left shoulder. Lift the head, lift the chest. Come back into the middle, and, and see if you can get a little lower. Right? Get yourself down, get yourself low. Deep, deep breathing. So moving the weight around. And then what you can do is, is when you come up onto the hands is reach back with the right hand for the left foot. So try to pull it in and bring it down and then bring it up. And maybe you can reach back. And this is, you know, sitting on blocks for hero's pose. It's the same thing. It's really the same thing. And, and explore, is it better to get lower? It may or may not be. You know, I, f I feel it more in my hip when I'm down on my left side. So um, that's usually what's stopping me from on a day that I can't get super low in the splits. It's not so much my hamstrings, like front splits. And then release that. And then when you release that, sit the hips back about six, eight inches back and point through the front foot and flex it and point it and flex it and then take the left hand to the left if you can and when you're low like this think of lifting the leg to the face so you could be up on a chair you don't have to be super low right but try to lift the leg to the torso to the face right and then come back into a lunge now I'm using a block here I'm gonna slide it just in front of my left knee and then I'm going to come up. So a lot of times people can't come up because it hurts the knee, the back knee. So when I have this block here, there's very little weight in my back knee. You know, more of the leverage is in the quad and in the thigh. And, and you might need a different height than I have. You might need it to be on an angle or two blocks, right? But try to lift yourself up away from your hips. Think of dropping through the tailbone. And then what you can do is you can release the block or take the block out. Come back into a lunge, right? And then just step the left foot forward. Separate the feet about the width of the shoulders. Come into a squat if you can. It's a low squat. But even if the heels were up, this is still really good. You know, it's not, it's just there's more, there's more leverage on the feet and the calf muscle. And some people, it's, it's, it's rare, but some people just will never squat with their feet flat. Maybe that's you, right? You can fold forward into a four fold and then step the right foot back into a lunge and just keep exploring this, the space, like get longer, get wider, you know? Not super long, because we're gonna come up into a high lunge. So come up into a high lunge. You know, again, you wanna be stable and maybe you're, you're better off with the heel down. But keep lifting up out of your waist, keep strengthening the front of your body, your ribs. Take a couple more breaths here, and then bring your hands down, and with your hands down, bring your back knee down. Walk your hands over to your right side, look over the right shoulder, lift the head. You just keep, the more you can move your head, the, the more the spine will move um, to your benefit. Then take the hands to the inside, and just keep getting, you know, explore, you know, getting lower, you know, maybe you're down, all the way, again, not so important. It's just, um, maybe that's where you need to be, right? So take the back leg up off the floor, pull it up, and then bring it down. 
Um, by bringing it up, you might find that it's, it's weak in the hamstring or it's tight in the quad. And, and, and it could be a factor both, so that's why it's difficult to take up. So hold the foot if you can. Pull it to the body. Um, I'm, I'm predominantly doing, for me, I'm really doing it through my extension of my back hip. And that's what you need for um, Hanumanasana pose, and that's the front splits. So you can move the weight around, and then you can bring the left hand down, and then you can sit the hips back. And um, I say this often, like the splits, sure they, you know, some, some would say that it's an advanced pose, but you're just, this is a variation of split. So all these positions are working towards that. You're preparing your body to eventually do that. And it's, it's a gradual process. Um, bring the right hand on the outside of the left foot and keep pulling the left leg up into your face. So like taking the leg up more by the strength of the hip. And that's how you can get really strong through the hip flexor, which helps with all these forward bends. Then bring the right hand down and then take the back knee off the floor and just step the right foot forward. So the right foot is forward. Come back into a squat again. So push through the feet, lift through the chest, widen, you know, widen your upper bo uh, body, your shoulders, your back. And then come forward into a forward fold. So fold all the way forward into a forward bend. And then come down onto your knees. And then when you come down on your knees, um, I'm gonna do a bit of a side plank. So when I'm on my hands, you really wanna push through the floor, the hand, the floor, like push really hard. And then that'll take the pressure off the wrist and, and it'll be more active through the shoulder. And that's essentially what you're doing in a handstand. So the block really should keeps you from, um, you wanna be using your shoulder. And, and, and people, like when I come up into plank, I'm gonna spin my heels to the right, I'm gonna take my left arm up to the ceiling. So sometimes people do this, right? Not that this is bad, right? It's just, you want, you want the hand to support you. You want your shoulder to support you. And then you'll really start to get, you know, the support that you need. So I'm turning up towards the left hand. This is, you know, such a, it's a basic position. Um, might not be for you, right? But it's, it's something that can really build up into like better poses. It's not super flashy like this variation. It's very good in adding stability. Then bring the left hand down. Um, if you only got one block, come down on your knees, move the block over to the other side, grip the floor, right, push, Push the floor away from you, round the shoulders, spin the heels to the left, take the right arm up to the ceiling. So you, you don't have to do this, but I'm, I'm rotating my right arm in, I'm rotating it out, I'm really gripping the floor with my left hand and broadening through the shoulder, broadening through the back. And then I'm gonna bring the right hand down. I'm gonna push with the hand around through the shoulders. Right? And then I'm gonna come down on my knees and then just, um, if you can, keep the toes tucked and lift up so that you're sitting back on your feet. So again, if it's uncomfortable, gradually do this because you could do all of it, like anything, and then you might not be able to do it tomorrow. So it's just like, okay, if I did a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, I, I, you know, I've seen very, very old people have advanced practices. So it's not so much, um, it's, it's really possible for anyone. And it's really not that important. It's just, if, if that's something that you desire to develop, you most certainly can. So just bring the, bring your left hand into a fist and see how I'm holding the hand. So if I was on my hands like this on the floor, that could be really hard, but this is a very basic thing to initially do and then over time you can be on the hands. Then change the hand, have the right hand into this fist, and then pull back with the left hand. You're pulling the right hand towards the chest, and this is exposing the wrist. And, and then just, you know, you can feel around the wrist, or right? you might have stuff that just doesn't move, like tissues that does not move, and big reason why you can't be on the hands, right? Come back into a plank, 
right? And go back up into a down dog. So pull back up into a down dog. Walk your feet forward into a forward bend. Roll yourself up into a standing position. And then as you roll up, um, what we're gonna do is a bit of a, now the heels could be up. This is what we call like a sissy squat or variations of Ukatasana. But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna eventually use a chair. But what I did earlier in class is these types of positions, and that's why I did the toe stand just now, is that, you know, if the feet are really not move, the tissues aren't moving in the feet, then it's gonna affect the knees. So I'm just gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm moving my hips forward, right? My heels are up, but my heels could be on something like a blanket. So I'm gonna use a chair just so that you have something to work with. So, and, it, and when you go back and you use the chair, it's, it could be blocks on chair, right? But I really believe in rotational back bends, like strongly, like my back never hurts when I'm rotating. When I go straight back sometimes, it does hurt. Um, it's not that you shouldn't do that, right? You should do it if it's okay, right? But I'm gonna go back, I'm looking to the chair, I'm just touching it. So be up on the toes, send the hips forward. It, it don't get caught up in touching something. But if you're close to touching something like a chair, you could use it, you could touch the chair and then push away. But you're really getting a lot of space through the thoracic, through the shoulders. And, and this is all twists, but you're using your body weight and gravity. He, feet, feet could be flat too, but if you don't have a lot of flexibility, heels up are probably better. And it could be really good work for the knees because the instability will strengthen the knees. So I'm gonna go over to the right side now. Hips sent forward, I'm reaching back, right? And this is a big part of the splits, obviously back bending. So you can go back, reaching back for the chair. I have very long arms. You can go back, right? And if I'm practicing, I'm just, I don't want, you know, cause I only have so much time. I probably would do a lot more of this and then reaching for the feet and reaching for the floor. I just, with an hour class, I don't really have the time and I'm not about just cramming things in and obviously, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody, but you could do more of that, you know, but a little bit at a time you want to, cause it is, it's, it, it can be extreme, right? So come back into a wide stance with the feet and with the stance nice and wide, what we're going to do is go back into that Cossack stretch a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to move. You'll always go to your stronger leg. You'll notice that you'll be like, oh, okay, I could go over here, but uh, going over here might not be an option. So you want to strengthen the weak leg, right? So I'm going to go to my left. I'm going to use my hands, but you can have the chair here, right? I'm going to go to my right and then come back up. But the whole time that you're doing this, try to keep resistance so that you're not just too much in your hamstrings, too much in your knees or your hips, right? So don't go all the way if you don't have that range. And then over time, you're gonna to start to see like, wow, you know, I can move my legs out wider. Um, it, 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 again, it's not so important that you do that, but I'm sitting down, right? I'm, pu I'm pushing my feet into the floor, really getting wide through the thighs. I'm gonna push through my right foot. I'm gonna go back to my left. And, and it's really knowing which side to really practice. Um, this side for me is much more flexible. So if I'm really wanting to balance myself out more, I'm gonna spend more time on my right side because my, my left side isn't as mobile. So you can point through the toe and then bring yourself back up, have the feet nice and wide. Take the feet out wide again, lift the thighs up and out. As you lift the thighs up and out, you know, you're, you're getting a good extension through the legs, getting your legs to move out into a wider range of motion. So bring, toe heel the feet in a little bit closer, bring yourself back up. I'm not gonna do like the full splits. I'm just gonna show you like different parts of it. I showed the full splits last week. 
or the kettlebell, I think. But I'm gonna use a chair and 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 this there's many ranges to this and I'll show you that. So I'm gonna place the chair up against the wall just so that it's stable. And, and it could be anything. Also it could be you just in a long stance. So I'm gonna step my right foot up onto the chair just to give you some options. And this could be what you're doing, just this, right? But I could go to the wall with my hands. I could get low. Just don't obviously overdo it. You know, I'm, I'm getting low here. I'm moving the weight around, getting more and more exposure into my left hip. Um, and again, all these, your opinion matters in terms of how you're doing this because you'll see what's really effective. Um, yeah, and it could be a measure of hard or difficult. You know, it's not like, as you get more flexible, easy, it will be something that isn't necessarily as beneficial as it used to be, right? So bring yourself back up, and when you come back up, I'm gonna extend up, I'm in an upright position, and what I'm gonna do is make my stance longer, but you gotta be really careful with this. I'm gonna be in a really long, like a split. So I'm I'm in this upright position, right? And some people don't wanna be on their knee, but you know, say you go for a walk, you can really use a park bench or something like that, but stay strong. That's what I like about this is you, you can't just dump into it. You can't just, you have to really support yourself. It's a big, big stretch through my left hip. Um, even though I, you know, I can, I can do the splits, right? Um, bring yourself forward. Now you, you might be really long. You can hop the left foot in. You could hop it in more, bring yourself up and then bring that back leg down and then step the left leg up. We're going to do that lunge series first. So be in an upright position, use a wall. You know, if I'm in the corner of the wall, then I have two options of the wall, the, the wall that's in front of me and the wall that's beside me. I could bring the hands down on the inside. I could be in a, I'm, I'm more in a pigeon variation. See how my knee is out. If you can, hopefully you can see that. But when I'm here, it's, I'm pushing into the thigh and the knee just to give you a different option, but um, this can be, I'm, I'm squeezing the leg up into the hand and then I'm going to come back and I can be low with my elbows. I can move it back where I'm moving more into the split, you know, and it's like this hamstring is more flexible for me. So this side's actually easier in some ways. Um, and also too, my, my right hip is more flexible. So when I'm lunging on my right side, it's, it's more beneficial for me to practice that. I could take the arms out wide, right? And, and you know, start with like 10 seconds maybe, you know, but you could work sets of this, right? When you come back, move the right foot in, Pop it in, and then bring the left foot down. Now just to kind of test it out, just because we did some of the Cossack stretch, I want, I want you to see the difference. So when I take my feet out wide, just, or even just warrior two, right? All these positions will be that much easier because you have more strength and flexibility. So just come forward with the hands if you need to, chair right, but turn the right foot out, sit and do a Cossack stretch. Drive through the right foot, come up, bring yourself back up, come down, right, bring yourself back up, and then come back down, right, and then bring yourself back up, come all the way back up, bring your feet in. So we're gonna, not, I'm not gonna do a handstand today, but I'm gonna do some pike handstands, and that can be really beneficial it's really getting the shoulders over the hands. And it's it's similar, it's just, it's less scary, but it's something that you could, you know, implement on your own. So come down on your hands, and when you come down on your hands, just be in a short stance, and take the knees up off the floor, you know, push through the hands, round through the shoulders, and then lift up into a pike, right? And then come, when you come forward into a pike, hands are over here, so I'm here, actually did that wrong. 
I'm going to come forward. I was just, um, wasn't really thinking, <laughs> but I'm going to come forward with my shoulders. So I'm gripping the floor. I'm going to come forward and then back. And I'm going to come forward. So it's pretty short here. And then back down. And then forward, push through the hand. Now, when I practice, and that's just me, but when things get a little like dodgy and like, ah, oh, this is, I, I know that I shouldn't do more, that's when I stop. And then I can do it later today, I can do it tomorrow, and that's really helped me a lot. And uh, probably, you know, it's probably one of the best things I learned from yoga is just knowing when to stop and come out of things and do things differently. So just do a couple more if you can. So tuck the toes. And when you tuck the toes, press up, press forward. And you can walk in more. Go back to a, a squatting position, quadruped position. And then come forward, push through the hands. Really grip the floor. Right? And then come back down. And then when you come back down, um, just bring, come back into that hands underneath the shoulders. Get to an easy position that you can lift the heels of the hands off the floor. So lift. And this is just like, it, it burns. But um, I really believe in this and it will help, can re help rehabilitate the hands and the wrists. Uh, it's just like tiring, really tiring. And when I said I do 50, this is when I do like, like easy range the closer my hands are to my knees, the easier it is. And then just come back, and then when you come back, go back to having the, the fists. Sit on your feet if you can, any capacity. Pull on the hand, we did this earlier. Uh, pull on the left hand. And then just, again, manipulate the tissues in the form. Feel what just is tight, doesn't move. You could rotate the hand in and out. You could circle the hands. You know, this is all very good. It's just the more loaded you are, like even just like push-ups or planks, stretches out the hands, the wrists. So that's, again, like doing a handstand. So just come into a seated position, have the legs, you know, just feet as wide as the knees, uh, squeeze the legs into the arms and push the knees out. Um, as, as you squeeze in, you know, th again, this is a very basic, but it's really the beginning of doing, you know, more with your, with your practice. So squeeze the legs into the arms, right? Then relax that and then bring the feet together. And with the feet together, bring the right hand into the right thigh, push down into the thigh, resist that pressure, right? Then release that hand, bring the left hand into the left thigh, resist that pressure. So lift the leg up into the hand to so create some space in the in the capsule of the hip and then just bring it back now you could you could keep practicing sitting cross-legged again higher level sit higher but eventually you can start to do i really think like rather than doing pigeon not that i don't believe in that pose but a double pigeon or stacking the legs is much easier to learn in my opinion so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have my left leg on the bottom and my right leg on top and it might be like, oh, this is already really just difficult for you. The closer you have your left foot, that's the bottom leg, the closer you have it to you, the easier it is. So hopefully you can see that. I'm not perfectly symmetrical. When I bring my leg forward into this type of position, there's a lot more emphasis on the hip, but that's where you want it to be. You don't want it to be the knee, you don't want to deviate so much through the foot because that's how it can affect the knee, you know. Um, with like more classic positions, it's where people can hurt their knees. So I'm going to push my right hand into my thigh. I'm going to resist that. And then as I'm resisting, I'm just pulling my right hip back a little bit in space. And that's to, um, again, create a, you know, it's really small, but you'll literally feel... Uh, the acetabulum, um, you'll feel that rotate out. And then you could release that and then bring the right leg down and take the left leg up. 
So my class is changing times. So I'm changing my class on the weekend. If you didn't know, it's gonna be Saturday at 9 a.m. to 10. Uh, I just uh, hope that's a good time. And then like all my classes are on my YouTube channel, John Witt. So all those classes are available. You can share them with everyone. And cause I know not everybody can make a donation. But if you can make a donation, my don uh, my Venmo and my PayPal is John Witt Yoga. I'm pushing my left hand in my left thigh and I'm resisting. I'm pulling my left hip back. Again, if my right leg is in closer to me, it's much easier. And easier can be way better. And then as it gets easy, well then you can get that, that uh, symmetrical type of position between bottom and top leg uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm and you can feel pain in the hip with this uh, for me when I experienced that I just didn't push more and it went away you know I was a bit afraid of that I, you know I don't, I don't want you know you could tear things you could tear your labrum um, you would have to do it over and over and over again most likely to do that or be in a really loaded position where you're not strong you know, that's why people tear their hips in pigeon is that there, it's just, it's just all weight and no, no muscular tension to support it. And then you can release that and then just take the legs out into a wide position. So anytime I do like hip opening or deep folds of the knee, I like to straighten the legs out. Now that could be straight out in front of you, but, um, we're going to, not pull so much with our hands. Sit on a higher surface, take the arms out, lift your chest. So what I'm doing is I'm in these types of positions, I'm, I'm either grounding my legs down or I'm lifting my legs up and out. And then and they come up and then just come forward at like more like a 45 degree angle to the left and see where your, your spine doesn't necessarily move. And that's what's that you know finding that can really be helpful so I'm still more central but to the left foot and I'm, I'm using my strength to come forward not just pulling right or loading now I can go over to the right and you might be like oh it's just like I can't get to that one side well it's okay you could hold a wall you could get a friend to help you you know um, hold a piece of furniture and pull yourself, but you know, and your knees could be bent, you know, and, and, and you can come, you know, come out, you know, anytime you need to, but think of widening the legs out, creating more space in the shoulders, right? And then bring yourself back up and then, um, just sit in a Baddha position again. Have the hands beside you, lift the hips up off the floor, push the knees out. So I, I hope you had a great class. I'm gonna have you on your back eventually and I'll give you a relaxation. Um, but we're continuing to um, make more and more masks. So all the donations really help with that. Uh, and um, we've been giving them out locally um, to postmen and um, firemen and, 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 and uh, uh, first providers or the, the, the people that are working the, uh, the ambulances. So um, we really appreciate your support. I'm, I'm really hoping that these classes are giving you lots of relief and, and peace of mind. So what you can do is you can lie back on your back. You can um, relax. You know, you can take all the uh, the tension out of your hands, out of your arms, out of your legs. And then as, you, as you're doing that, you know, you can, you can really feel the effects of good practice. So rather than just practicing, you really want to make your practice um, more meditative, like not just work. Um, so becoming more sensitive and becoming more uh, internal and understanding these things. And then really can, you know, again, it could be a very uh, a skillful practice. So if you have to be somewhere, of course, you know, you can always, you could be sitting as I am, 
you're standing like no is or you could um, continue to stay on your back but again we really love the support and you know if any questions reach out to me um, again I'm teaching privately on zoom so if you want a private you could always uh, email me from my website John Wick Yoga all right have a beautiful day and hopefully We'll see you in class on Saturday at 9 a.m. All right, we won't see you, but um, we'll know that you're there. Bye-bye.